I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. The RV industry has dramatically pumped the brakes on production, down over 50% year over year, and that's causing lots of ripple effects. For one, it's probably a good time to buy a new, older model year RV. There are lots of 2022s on dealership lots going for great prices as dealers try to make room for 2023s and even 2024s. Dealers are definitely struggling right now, especially the small ones. That's a shame because it's going to cause a lot more dealership consolidation. The big chains can weather the storm, and one is even reallocating cash on hand with a plan to gobble up as many as they can in the next couple of years. Camping World is the nation's largest dealership chain, and for better or for worse, they drive a lot of decisions made in RV manufacturing. They're not struggling nearly as much as the little guys, and in a recent press release touting another dividend for investors, CEO Marcus Lemona said that the management team and the board are undergoing a deep dive of the company's capital allocation strategy to determine what they believe would be the most prudent allocation of their shareholders' capital. The dealership acquisition landscape remains more robust than I have ever seen, said Lemonis, and we believe we can materially grow our business over the next five years, targeting a 50% increase in our store count. That means about 100 more camping worlds across the country and 100 fewer independent dealerships. It also means that Camping World is very close to being able to say that they have a dealership and more importantly, a dealership license in all of the lower 48 states, which will allow them to achieve their goal of true nationwide online sales where an RV is delivered to your door. Our buddy Josh the RV Nerd at Bish's RV just did a great video that shares a lot more of the details about the current dealership situation and the deals available out there. I'll share it in the description. An update from Yellowstone National Park on the guy rangers were looking to find that tried to help the bison calf that I shared with you on our National Parks News Roundup earlier this week. Authorities identified him as Clifford Walters of Hawaii, and he pleaded guilty to one count of, quote, feeding, touching, teasing, frightening, or intentionally disturbing wildlife on May 31st. Walters was charged a $500 fine and a $500 community service payment to Yellowstone Forever Wildlife Protection Fund. On May 20th, Walters approached a struggling newborn bison calf in Lamar Valley. The calf had been separated from its mother when the herd crossed the Lamar River. As the calf struggled, the man pushed the calf up from the river and onto the roadway. Visitors later observed the calf walk up to and follow cars and people. Park rangers tried repeatedly to reunite the calf with the herd, but their efforts were unsuccessful. The calf was later euthanized by park staff because it was abandoned by the herd and was causing a hazardous situation by approaching cars and people along the roadway. Walters wasn't acting maliciously. He just didn't know what he was doing was wrong. He thought he was helping. But it's that time of year now when we start hearing about dozens of tourists making poor decisions in parks. Turns out that also on May 20th, a woman walked up to a fully grown bison laying on the ground at Yellowstone and took a selfie with it only inches away. Yellowstone National Park wants to remind the public that approaching wild animals can drastically affect their well-being and, in this case, of course, their survival. It might not just be tourists acting a fool in parks, though. Some animals are having their fair share. In Indiana State Parks, the black vulture, the gray-headed cousin of the turkey vulture, is causing damage to vehicles, often trucks and SUVs parked at boat ramps. Windshield wipers, sunroof seals, and rubber or vinyl parts are at particular risk. Most of the time, perching black vultures do little or no damage. However, in some cases, the destruction can be extensive. The vultures can tear out rubber seals, peck pieces out of truck bed liners, and scratch paint with their claws. Why are they attacking vehicles? Well, the quick answer is that nobody knows for sure. Rubber and vinyl certainly aren't a part of their natural diet and they only rarely eat any of it. Typically, the material is simply discarded after it's been ripped from the vehicle. Some have theorized that the smell of a certain chemical in the rubber might be attracting the birds. However, studies have not supported this, and it seems an unlikely answer given that black vultures have a terrible sense of smell. A variety of tactics have been tried out to discourage black vulture attacks on vehicles. The most common is to discourage black vulture committees, which is what they call a flock, from congregating at key locations. Staff members have removed dead trees to make areas less attractive for perching and have used harassment techniques, including firecrackers, laser lights, and pyrotechnics to chase vultures from the area. Lethal solutions to the problem have been offered for consideration, but black vultures are occupying their natural habitat and are playing an important part in that ecosystem. They're also a protected species under the Migratory Bird Act. 
If you plan to visit state parks in southern Indiana, officials suggest that you cover your vehicle. Another reminder about getting your camping booked ahead of the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse. RV Share says that RV rental bookings are up 20 times over any other dates next year for prime viewpoints along the path of totality. So if you aren't going to be camping that weekend and you want to rent out your RV, that might be a good option to make some money. The eclipse's path of totality will run from southwestern Texas up through Maine. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. Abby, the kids, and I have been using their mattresses in our last two RVs. We couldn't be happier. We're sleeping better, and we were able to customize them to fit our exact needs. Our kids' odd-sized bunks in the new trailer? No problem. RVMattress.com offers a 120-night sleep trial with a 10-year warranty. Plus, their products are toxin-free and incredibly simple to set up. We've had them shipped to campgrounds from their factory in Arizona, and you just unroll them and let them expand. RVMattress.com is offering the RV Miles community 25% off when you visit RVMattress.com slash RVMiles with the code RVMiles, all one word. That's RVMattress.com slash RVMiles with code RVMiles for 25% off. Our thanks to RVMattress.com for supporting this channel and to you for supporting our sponsors. A new partnership is giving Keystone RV owners a leg up on camping in Montana and Idaho this year. Keystone has partnered with Land Trust to offer stays at over 75 private properties across Montana and Idaho. The partnership features a curated selection of vast RV-friendly ranches, farms, and other properties exclusively available to Keystone owners. Property rental costs vary between $50 and $100 per day, with the potential for extra charges depending on special tours and additional services. But Land Trust will waive booking fees for this Keystone promotional event, and reservations can be accessed through a website set up for the offer that I'll link to in the description. And finally, KOA, the largest campground chain in North America, is introducing a new type of site. They call it the signature site, and it will include an expanded patio with a covered seating area, such as a sky deck or a gazebo, expanded grilling elements and a fire experience, all on at least 3,000 square feet. In the company's latest research, KOA found that 69% of campers expressed they would likely stay in a well-appointed premium campsite, with a growing audience of younger campers more interested in socializing while camping. Already under development at some KOA locations across the country, the KOA Signature site brings broader campground amenities to a single site-level experience, and it's expected to be a popular offering. Upgraded landscaping will define the site and offer privacy for guests, and other potential amenities will include EV charging, leash-free pet pens, and maybe even lawn games. Don't expect to see too many of these, though. KOA anticipates that just 50 signature sites will be available across the U.S. and Canada by 2025. Would you pay extra for a site bigger than most homes? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. If you want more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you want news delivered to your email feed, make sure to sign up for our Road Signs email newsletter. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.